from your local election headquarters, this is Eyewitness Newsmakers. Welcome to Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. I'm Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalshik. And today we are joined by our political analysts, Dr. David Sosar from King's College, David Thank Yonkai you. from the LULAC Political Letter, and attorney Chris Cullen. They joined us all election season to talk about politics, and that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Taking a look uh, ahead to the... 2017 by taking, I guess, a look back a little bit and discussing what's ahead for for um, our area and for the United States. And I guess the first um, uh, first thing we want to talk about is, of course, the uh, presidency. You know, we have President-elect Trump, Vice President-elect Mike Pence, and we have something new interesting a thank you tour and uh, i think that's uh, something different that we haven't seen we have haven't seen a lot in this uh, this election so i guess let's let's start talking about that well i i agree with you it's a thank you tour that no one has ever seen before and many would say the president elect trump has a great deal to be thankful for but it is the domination of the news cycle it is the domination of the conversation it's a distraction away from traditional uh, 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 transitions of power, but it is all done with that Trump uh, brand to it, and uh, he keeps close to his base, and in many respects that base is very important to what is going to happen in the future. The one thing about Donald Trump, the one predictable thing about Donald Trump is that he is unpredictable. <laughs> and that thank you tour, I, I don't feel good about the thank you tour. I'm sure that uh, the supporters feel good about it, and I'm sure that Donald Trump feels good about it. But it seems like he's like re-legislating the campaign. And some of the stuff I heard uh, on TV this week at Wisconsin, where he was talking about how much he won and he crushed this person. You know, we know he won. We accept the fact that he won. We wish him the best. But now it's time to just kind of tone it down. And 71% of the, I think it was 71% of the American people want him to tone it down and just get out of campaign mode and get into governing mode. It's nice to say thank you, but it's not nice to rub people's noses in it. You know what the interesting thing about this thank you tour is? Is that he again is controlling the media. Yeah. He he had, was a master in the primaries. He was a master in the general election. Not that he necessarily always liked what happened in the general election <laughs> uh, with the media. And he said so many times and continues to say so. But he is a master of making the media dance to his tune. And, and uh, the media, I think, is having a hard time with that. Uh, the major networks, the major newspapers of this country are, are already grinding their teeth. And, and I find that very interesting. But how do you square with the fact that he's, the media is dancing to his tune, but yet he's attacking the media? And, and that, he's saying the media is no good. He's Katie the Kerr part. in the back row. I know. You're a terrible person. Can I throw this out there? Because it's worked before. <laughs> yeah, it did exactly. not, every, every, every major poll and those that weren't that major predicted him to lose. The day before the election, we talked to all the pollsters. And what happened? He went, so why, let me just throw this out there. Why should he change his game plan? It's right. Why, why does the media at this point, uh, in terms of the general public that he's created in a lot of cases... Uh, uh, put, you, put the media lower than Congress. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's, That's a lot, a lot of, work. of heavy lifting. <laughs> if, if I may, the, the, the matter of, of his domination of the news cycle is not only a high-tech venture, but he has taken advantage of the press in terms of their need to cover things. And he is now still... Uh, uh, now President-elect Trump. As candidate Trump and President-elect Trump, it's the same mode. But there's a new, new standard to be li lived up to upon inauguration. And at that point, the press has to make a determination. Are we going to have a president communicate to the United States of America via 140 characters in Twitter? Or are we going to have press conferences? Are we going to have normal uh, relationships with the White House through a press secretary? And if that isn't followed, I think the press would be in a position to say, we're covering it as we cover a president. We're not going to watch the presidency, the most valued institution of this country, go down 
or lessen its standards simply because of a personal choice, he'll have to live up to a standard, and that's the role of the press. And Chris, you saw that yesterday. Um, you saw that the, this past week when he was supposed to have a, con uh, a news conference on Thursday, Absolutely. and he didn't have it. He just didn't basically have. called it off and says, "Well, we'll talk to you in January." So you saw a perfect example of that this week. Another interesting uh, aspect during this uh, time as we head towards uh, a, a new um, regime in, in office: a recount. Uh, questions about a recount, which, you know, had some people, oh no, now what happens next? Your thoughts on on that? Well, I think personally, I think the recount was a stunt uh, by Jill Stein to raise money. I don't think it had any type of validity. I mean, recounts, let's face it, have a validity, but I mean, you know, he did win by uh, a good margin. So, um, I, I, and I think he gave fuel to the fire that uh, he thinks everything was rigged. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, when you're talking about the recounts like this, um, there are some states, Florida, for example, if it's less than 1%, uh, automatically have a recount, yes, and right. you do a recount by way of, of certain select counties and certain select ballots, and, and, and you just double check to see that your process has been done and done fairly. Uh, there was really no need for this. Some people have suggested that Jill Stein use this to raise money. Others have uh, used it to suggest that there's it's a means of, of invalidating uh, the Donald Trump presidency. Uh, this will become whatever anyone wants to make of it. It's either a farce or it's, see, I told you so. It's, he's not legal. He's not this. He's not that. It's going to, it's going to work for both sides. In that same vein, the story about the Russian Russians interfering with the election. Right. One, does that have any traction? And two, could it lead to anything? I mean, could it lead to questions of a recount? Or could it jeopardize his presidency? Or is that, is that just another fantasy world? Well, on the hacking issue, the Congress is already speaking to move on investigations to find out the extent, if any at all, of the hacking. The real impact of what was done was really not to change re election results as much as to influence the election. For example, a lot of the WikiLeaks documentation and the emails and all of that seemed to confirm many negative traits that were going on in the Clinton campaign and per portrayed it in a negative light, which had a a counterbalance to some of the things that were going on uh, with Mr. Trump's campaign. Eventually, however, I really think it was what the FBI found on a, a uh, laptop that was in the possession of Clinton aide Huma Olabin and uh, Anthony Weiner, the former congressman in New York, which ultimately led to a problem. And well, I really think that the problem is that. Um, it's one of those things where the um, investigation is going to be taken by Congress. I think Trump should endorse the investigation because uh, he doesn't want to be at war with his intelligence agencies. And from that uh, statement that he made the other night, um, you know, I, that, seems to, that seems so. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with, with Dave that there ought to be an endorsement of and, and a review of the processes that are used. Uh, what can we do to stop other countries from hacking into our governmental uh, uh, computers. Uh, it has nothing to do with the election. It has everything to do with uh, hacking into our governmental systems. Uh, I think Donald Trump has more of a problem, uh, and again, it depends upon what side you're on, with not that in regards to the Russians, but in regards to, in some cases, some of his his appointments thus far. That's uh, true. And, and although I think a lot of people think they're good appointments, uh, relationships that one has had business-wise with the Russians raises questions. Well, we'll continue our discussion on politics locally and nationally when this edition of Newsmakers from your local election headquarters continue. We'll also be talking about the Pennsylvania Attorney General's race. You're watching Newsmakers. And you can find more information about our show on pahomepage.com under the Newsmakers and Local Election Headquarters link. We'll be right back.
Dave Sozar, Dave Yonkai, and attorney Chris Cullen, our political analyst. You've seen them, you've heard them for the last six, <laughs> seven months, even longer, talking about politics here on Eyewitness News. Today, we're sort of wrapping up the historic November election. We're talking about the president-elect's victory tour. And I'm really amazed, and you know, we've all covered elections for years and years. The folks coming into Trump Tower, it's like a parade every day. Those who you would never expect, Kanye West, Jim Brown, um, Al Romney, <laughs> Al Gore. So is this the Trump playbook? I mean, we want to give him benefit of the doubt. He's saying, listen, I want to hear from you, but he's also keeping maybe potential critics at arm's length. That's how I'm looking at it. What say you? Well, uh, it is a process. It's a Trump thing, so to speak. It dominates the news cycle, but more importantly, it shows a, uh, an acceptance or those coming to see the, the president-elect for whatever reason. Uh, there's been cabinet potential uh, uh, appointees coming to see him of various political uh, background, Mitt Romney, as you said. Uh, there has been, that has been the portal by which the news of what he is doing comes out. And it's through that prism of Trump Towers, which shows this magnificent building, a magnificent lobby. It was like when he used the golf presentation at Bedminster. That is a marvelous scene, and it's a great optic. And that's what he's doing to give majesty, so to speak, or, 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 or cosmopolitan nature to his uh, president-elect time period and tra transition effort. Attorney, you're way too kind and noble. I think he has a list. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a list. And I think he's going to say, okay, you know, what's going to get people, uh, what's going to get the most notice? Al Gore? Oh, yeah. Kanye West? Oh, yeah. Jim Brown? Yeah. I, and I, I mean, you know, um, I was a fan. I'm The Apprentice. I used to watch that all the time. And you I applied mean, for a spot on it, didn't you? Pardon me? No, did you I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. <laughs> only uh, a rumor. Only a rumor. Only a rumor. But, you know, I watched the show, and, the, and there's an apprentice-like quality of the way that he's doing things. If he is doing this to be inclusive, as the attorney said, then then, then great. Right. But I just have a feeling that he's... Re he's he, it, you think he enjoyed the campaign. I mean, he's going to be enjoying the presidency to, like, t to the max. <laughs> You know what? I got to be honest with you. I don't. I th don't think this has anything to do. No lie, Dave. With, don't be honest. Lie with, 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 with what, what, what's happening and who he wants there and who he doesn't want there or whatever else. This um, it, and it's happened before, but never to this extent. People would always make the trip to the Texas White House to see uh, George Bush as an example, but never the Kanye West. Never the 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 the, the arch enemies of the 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 other party. Uh, what's happening right? Right now, and I, I, I really do think that he's playing. He's playing this uh, for all that it's worth. Uh, this is going to be the. I don't. You want to talk about about opposites? This is going to be the imperial presidency of the common man, so to speak. Uh, if you could, if you could imagine that, Donald Trump spoke for the common man in this country, but boy, is this going to be an elaborate presidency, uh, from the the golf courses to the Trump Towers, where he expects to spend, from what I hear, uh, two or three days a week. Uh, that 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 his life uh, white. Melania and son are going to stay so he can finish his schooling but this is this is the imperial presidency uh, taken in a complete opposite way uh, of the common man but in in a way I've heard some say as uh, Ivanka Trump said during the uh, convention I want my father wants to bring everyone up to their highest possible achievement and he by indirectly exposing everyone to these various venues, mm -hmm. he's making Americans, all Americans, part of that. Yes, he is. That's very true. Well, I think the argument could be made for a lot of people. The, the, the jury's going to be out on that. And why I say that is because I think that there's a lot of factors going on between what Trump believes and what the Congress believes and what other parts of the Republican Party believe. Now, if the Congress, Paul Ryan and the Republicans have been going after Medicare and privatization of Social Security for a long time, if if that happens, then I think that the bloom is going to be off the rose in terms of this imperial presidency and the glamour, because yeah. people are going to be thinking about their own pocketbook. I, you're going to have to watch Ryan. Ryan's the guy that's yes. going to be driving the agenda. If, if I may add one thing. In 1968, John Mitchell 
who ran Richard Nixon's campaign, told the reporters on their, on their coming into the White House, don't listen to what we say, watch what we do. And that is perfectly applicable to the Trump presidency. He is going to say what he wants to say. The real Trump presidency will be defined by what they do. And let me just throw one other thing in here. It's perception, perception, perception. A lot of people have suggested uh, uh, th there were hate groups that were supporting Trump. There were the white supremacists. There were the KKK. There was everybody and anybody who hated somebody in this country. Take a look at who's been going to Trump Tower. Everybody and anybody of color, creed, you name it. He's been inclusive on this. It's hard to say that the man himself is a hater when you see everybody that's been there. Well, we have uh, much more to talk about, and we will when this edition of Newsmakers from your local election headquarters continues. Learn more about our show on pahomepage.com. .com. Welcome back to Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalshik, Dr. David Sosar, David Yonkai, and attorney Chris Cullen are with us. And we're discussing the, uh, the presidency, the uh, cabinet positions, and one of the uh, people that was a strong supporter, of course, Congressman Lou Barletta, had his name in there for a cabinet position and then decided to stay with Congress. He took his name off the consideration list. What do you say about that? First of all, you you're surprised? absolutely right uh, about uh, Congressman Lou Barletta. He was an active supporter. He was on the ground floor with Donald Trump and very good. Uh, we reported here at, uh, during the campaign that his, uh, his congressional district and the congressional district of, of uh, uh, Tom, Congressman Tom Marino could provide a tremendous amount of votes for Donald Trump. And if, when you look at the numbers, Trump only won by 44,000 votes in the state and Luzerne County won for Trump. The same in Congressman Marino's district. But Lou Barletta made a very principled decision. I believe that he thought that he can do more for this section of the state, our section of the state, northeastern Pennsylvania, and for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania by staying in the Congress. And he's in a great position to have the ear and the heart of the president. I'm glad he's staying mainly because I think that he could temper some of the more right-wing members of Congress. If anything, Lou Barletta is very sensible, and he gives a very sensible presentation as a congressman. Yeah, I, 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 I have to agree with what both gentlemen have said here. I, I think that uh, uh, Congressman Barletta's place really is to stay in the Congress. Uh, I think he feels more comfortable there. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that he, he uh, took the role that he did. Uh, he does have the ear of the president, and uh, uh, as speaking as a resident of this congressional district, we can only hope that that will mean better things for and bringing offices and such into this congressional district. That can help. It doesn't hurt when you pick up the phone and call, call the White House. That's exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. Josh Shapiro being John Raffrey. I think there were some <laughs> comments on these <laughs> political analysts that Josh Shapiro didn't stand a chance of, you know, like a snowball and you know where. What happened? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I don't mean about, about the analysts or the <laughs> prediction, but how did he win? How did he pull it off? Well, the way that he won, which was kind of interesting, is that the row officers, the Democratic row officers who were running, got 300,000 votes more than Katie McGinty. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering if that means that we don't want to elect a woman governor or a, a woman senator, uh, mainly because of the fact that, you know, he, he did some really um, great big vote totals in Philadelphia and also in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know if, I don't know how Rafferty lost this race, but I think that the ground game was there for the people in Pennsylvania, and um, I think that uh, they just kind of pulled away from Clinton. Yeah, the man with the money won. Uh, yeah. He got his he That's got right. his message out. Uh, he raised six million to uh, Rafferty's one point five million. The six million was used <laughs> very effectively in his ads. He came across wonderfully in those ads. Uh, uh, he had a very good resume. Uh, I don't think anybody really is saying that. Uh, you know, this was one of those races where I think whoever Josh you Shapiro. picked, you, you felt mm -hmm. that you were going to get a good attorney general out of it. Uh, Josh Shapiro was. Just much more aggressive, and uh, and it showed. Uh, 
the, th the thing about Mr. Shapiro that was very, very important was the backers. He was Ed Rendell, uh, uh, other Democrats, and he had a very good support from uh, the for former Arlen Specter crowd, uh, which be all became Democrat in 2010 when they, uh, when Arlen became a Democrat to run for Senate. So that has been a very strong coalition in raising money and giving Mr. Shapiro a, 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 a career. And now he has advanced to the Attorney General's office. He's a co an accomplished lawyer. He's a good manager. He has some great ideas for Pennsylvania and money made the difference, not only in the primary for Mr. Shapiro, but also in the general election. I think Pennsylvania is going to be well served with him as Attorney General, and I think it, di it didn't matter who was going to get elected uh, Attorney General, Pennsylvania was going to get a much needed professional in that office. And we had a, a story earlier this week about he's making the rounds already, mm -hmm. talking to seniors, talking about his code of conduct mm -hmm. that he wants his staff to sign. So he's hitting the ground running and he's making the rounds. And, and I do believe after listening to Dave and I uh, explain our situation here, I think we've, we I think we did a pretty good job in 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 amending the fence. I hope with <laughs> yeah. with, with with Attorney General Shapiro uh, because I, uh, <laughs> we we hadn't given him a ghost of a chance. But I'm going to make sure my checkbook is balanced. That I'm not at 81. That's all I have to say. <laughs> well, we'll wrap up this edition of Newsmakers from your local election headquarters when we return right after this. <laughs> Stop.org Introducing the new Double Meat Signature Wraps from Subway. Handcrafted with a generous portion of protein and topped with a perfect blend of veggies and sauce. Now you can get the flavor you've been craving. 